give God glory for who he is and what he's going to do under this tent today, oh God. We just thank him. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voices and begin to worship him for he is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy of the praise. For this is the day that he has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy of the praise. We just bless him today. It is so good to see you in the house of God today under this big tent. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's good to see you. Find somebody else to tell them it's good to see you. Honey, we are live and we want you to come on in the house today. We're going to ask Minister Fran if she'll get that mic and open us up with prayer this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Dear Father, in the name Thank of you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God. You are Lord, worthy. Lord, we're coming before the throne of grace and mercy right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for God, we thank for being on one mind, one accord, one body, one spirit, oh God. Lord, for God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for you have just in this day, oh God. Lord, for God, we ask you right now to come in, Holy Spirit. Have your way, oh God. Move mightily by your power. Move mightily by your word, Lord God, because your word is truth, oh God. Your word is held in us to those that find it, oh God. Lord, we're seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for healing, deliverance, setting the captives free right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, speed, feed us spiritually, physically, Lord God. Lord, Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are worthy to be praised. We ask you right now to touch each and every individual right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch their minds, their hearts, their souls, their spirits, oh God. Lord, God, we ask you right now to do a great mighty work right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pull down stronghold, break barriers of bondage right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you right now, Lord God. Touch every ministry right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word coming forth, oh God. Open up our blinded eyes to see, oh God. Open up our dead ears to hear, Lord God. What thus said the Spirit of the Lord? We thank you, Heavenly Father, for obedient spirits, oh God. We pour down any native hidden spirits right now in the name of Jesus. We pour down fear right now in the name of Jesus. You're not giving a spirit of fear, but love out of sound mind, oh God. Our mind is the mind of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all things are working together for the good of those who love you, Lord God. We love you, we appreciate you, and we adore your holy name, oh God. Lord, you are holy, we are holy. You are righteous, we are righteous. You are faithful, we are faithful, oh God. You are just, we are just, oh God. We are the joint heirs of the kingdom, oh God. And we ask you right now to touch, heal, and deliver, oh God. Move how you need to move, oh God. And we surrender our lives because our lives belong to you. You are the reason why we live, move, and have our being. Lord, we love you, we appreciate you, and we adore you, oh God. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. And every tongue is going to confess you, Lord God, and every knee is going to bow. And Lord, we thank you for soul salvation. Thank you for being our Father, our soon coming King, the Lord of Lords. We thank you for being the Prince of Peace, oh God. We thank you, Lord, you reign, you rule, you are majesty, oh God. Jesus, 
daily, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, and living holy before God. Right now, we confess people are flowing to true love delivered church, and those who are bound by Satan will be set free through the ministry of the word of God. Every yoke shall be destroyed by the anointing of God's word for their lives. We confess that we are 100% tithers and cheer for givers to God's kingdom. We are bold in our witnessing and reigning as kings on the earth. We are hearers and doers of the word of God and are experiencing the only success and victory in every area of our life. Each member of this church is prospering spiritually, physically, and financially, having more than enough to meet the need of every situation. We are redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are a new creation in Christ. His workmanship is filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding. Thus said the Lord, true love redeems, the Holy One of true love. I am the Lord thy God, which leadeth true love, by the way, true love. I'm sorry. Father, we thank you for your blessings upon this church and for using us to establish your will throughout the earth. We claim it, we receive it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together if you believe that this morning. Amen. Come on, we're going to ask our one voice to come up. Hallelujah. As we get ready to go before the Father, grace, hallelujah, and song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The song says, Come thou almighty King. How many want the Holy Spirit to come? Amen. Come on, how many want the Holy Spirit to come? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We come to bless the name of Jesus. We come to magnify him. We come to lift him up. We come to give him glory. That is due unto him for his name is great. His name is mighty. His name is powerful. His name is rich. Amen. Glory to God. We bless you, Jesus.
give God a hand. Come on. Come on. Was that not wonderful? Come on. I know you can be good. Come on. I know it. I know it. I know, it. I know you don't feel like you should be feeling right now, amen. But how many of us know that it could be worse? It could be worse, amen. But we just give God honor this morning, amen. For being awesome. For being an awesome God, amen. For the breeze that we feel right now. He is so awesome, amen. He is so awesome. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody got Everybody got a hallelujah experience this morning. Hallelujah. He is marvelous. He is wonderful. He is so great. So we're going to prepare our hearts and minds, amen, for time and often, amen. I think I'm going to more blessed to give than it is to receive, amen. Because I remember there was a time in my life that I didn't know that I was supposed to sow seeds, amen. I was always looking for a harvest, but I didn't know that I was supposed to sow seeds, amen. But then one day I read in the Bible, and told me, I want to offer all my time into the storehouse, that there shall be in this house. And he told me to prove it now he'll win, amen. So as we prepare right now, how many of you know he can sleep to the soul, amen? How many farmers I got today? Anybody ready to sow a seed today? Oh, I know who you are, but anybody ready to sow a seed today, amen? Amen. So I'm going to have to do this. Let's do this. We are going to the rest of the ushers, amen. How they going to receive the offer, amen? Raise your ties off, and amen. They'll come around and meet you where you are, amen.
Thank you in advance for all your blessings that you have to bring down upon the We ask you that as we honor you today with our possession, our first fruits, that you allow our folks to be thankful. As you said in your word, Father, in three, nine to ten. Our overflow, that our bonds will be filled with plenty of our God. And we want to do with our first possessions, our first fruits, our God. We want to thank you for it all. We thank you in advance for us. Yes, God, your son died on the cross for our sins, Lord God. We thank you for the blood, Lord God. We thank you that you, you were so selfish to give up your son for our sins, Lord God. Without you, we call that we want to be here today, Lord God. As we stand before you right now, Lord God, we just lift your name and praise and we honor you. Yes, God, we honor you. Yes, God. We honor you, Lord God. We bless your holy name. We bless that you take our offerings, take our time, we take our first fruits. We bless you. We thank you for all. Your daughter says, Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, 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 shout hallelujah.
Oh God, you're worthy. Jesus, come on, let's just get in the presence just for a second, amen. Jesus, we sung and we prayed, amen. And now it's almost time for the word, amen. Come on, let's get our minds right, amen. How many of us know he's worthy? If he's done anything for you this week, you should be standing on your feet giving God some praise right now, amen. Hallelujah. Because you couldn't be stretched out somewhere, amen. Someone could be making arrangements for you right now, but God saw, God saw fit. He said, I'm not done with you yet. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, amen. Come on there, Jeremiah. God had plans for you today, amen. I mean, I know sometimes we got to get uncomfortable, amen. Sometimes we got to go beyond the walls, amen. I mean, I know our mission is not on the inside. Sometimes we got to go outside, amen. So how many of us know he's a sustainer? He'll keep you. Matter of fact, I think the words that he'll keep you in perfect peace. And all you got to do is just keep your mind on him, amen. So let's get our minds on him just for a second, amen, before the word goes forth. We just thank God this morning. I don't know about you, but I thank him for waking me up this morning. I don't know about you, but I couldn't wake myself up this morning, amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, if he would have shook me this morning, amen. If he would have nudged me in my side this morning. If he want to breathe, breathe in my lungs this morning, amen. Oh, come on. I wish I had somebody to testify with me, amen. I know I'm good, but I ain't that good, amen. But because he loved me, and because he had need of me, he shook me this morning. And for that, God, I give you praise. Oh, God, I give you praise, amen. I give you praise, God, just for who you are, amen. If you don't do anything else, God, I give you glory and I give you honor, God. How many of us know this is the day that the Lord has made? And you can rejoice and be glad in it, amen. Tell your neighbor it could have been you. Tell your other neighbor, because that one didn't tell you. Tell them it could have been you. We could have been visiting you in the hospital. We could have been taking up a collection for you, amen. We could have been cashing in some policies this morning, amen. But because of who he is, he made us who we are. And we just thank God this morning. We just thank God this morning, amen. Amen. I bring you greetings from True Love Deliverance Church, amen. Amen. Well, the Lord truly is the head of our life. I thank God for him being who he is. I thank him for him never missing a beat, amen. For him always being right on time, amen. Even when I'm out of time, amen. Oh, my God, somebody. Even when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, he's on time, amen. How many of us know we serve an on-time God, amen? Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank God this morning for my wonderful wife, Lady V, amen. 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 35 years, amen. 35 years. Oh, you go ahead and clap. It's okay. It's okay to clap, amen. 35 years. Keep on living. You'll get there. You'll get there. Amen. 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 I thank God for the for the minstrels. Y'all got a new name now. Is it One Voice now? Okay, One Voice. I, 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 I can go with that. Well, we thank God for One Voice this morning. Amen. Hey, I, I told you, I said, we need to stay outside more often. Oh, but y'all sounded superb. Y'all sounded marvelous. Amen. Oh, heaven, heaven is shaking this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our ministers this morning. Amen. Uh, we thank God for Minister Marcus. Amen. <laughs> what is the Lord saying to you? <laughs> we thank God for Elder Horton. Amen. Amen. I still, our Davids. Amen. Our Davids. Amen. Amen. When they play, Amen. Evil spirits have to flee. Amen. Amen. I thank God this morning. Amen. For true love delivers truth. For you showing out. You showing up this morning. Amen. I know a lot of us didn't want to get up at 8 o'clock this morning, amen. Well, here I am, Lord. But how many of us know sometimes we got to get uncomfortable, amen, to make other people comfortable, amen. So we thank God for them, amen. We thank God for True Love Delivers Church, amen. I thank God this morning for True Agape that's, 
It's brother shipping we got this man in the air, man. Hey, man, some dedicated, some dedicated people, man. Some people that are thirsty and hungry, amen. We thank God for their pastor, Pastor Jeff, and their first lady, Sister Sarah, amen. We thank God for them being here this morning, amen. Amen. We thank God for the apostles, amen. We thank God for the, for the ministers, amen. Matter of fact, we thank God for the fivefold ministry, amen. Amen. But if you are a banding prophet, evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, whatever you are, whatever your capacity is, we honor you for being here this morning, amen. Uh, we thank God this morning. Deacon Larry, God gave him a vision. Uh, he said that we should go outside the walls. Uh, I, I know a lot of times uh, we think that the pastor didn't say it, that, uh, uh, that it shouldn't be done, amen. But I thank God uh, for God speaking. Uh, just knowing that he's still speaking, amen. Not just to the pastor, but he's speaking to God's people, amen. So we thank God for Deacon Larry, amen. For that, amen. 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 This morning, we want to, we want to just come and just bless Fountain Heights this morning, amen. We didn't come to beat up on them, amen. We come to love on them this morning. We come to let them know that we are here and that we are here for them, amen. We come to let Fountain Heights know that this is not the end right here, amen. We come to let them know that this is only the beginning, amen. And somebody need to tell Fountain Heights, the best is yet to come, amen. The best is yet to come, amen. Just keep on living, amen. You're going you're gonna to see something you've never seen before and you're going to do something you've never thought you could do before, amen. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to move along. Amen. We're going to go into the word this morning. Amen. And there's a word for, for the body of Christ this morning. Amen. Uh, not just for Found Heights. Amen. But it's for the people of God this morning. Uh, for one, the ones that are here and the ones that are coming. Amen. And we're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Amen. We're going to look at three verses. Amen. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. The 13th through the 15th verse. 2 Corinthians, not Chronicles, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verses 13 through 15, and I will be reading from the New Living Translation, amen. The Bible said that when they went into the synagogue, as the priest opened the book, the people stood for the reading of the word of God, amen. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verses 13 through 15. The reader didn't have to tell the people to stand, amen. Automatically, they knew that when the word was getting ready to go forth, that it had so much power that they couldn't sit down, amen. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verses 13 through 15, and it reads as follows. Hmm. It says, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our own life. Verse 15 says, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life, let me read that one more time. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Father, I thank you right now, God, that you are the source of my strength, God. I yield myself to you right now, God. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor, God, because it belongs to you. So, Father, I ask right now, God, that as I become a minute particle, God, I ask that you rise up, God. That you rise up, God, and stand before your people, God. God, these are your sheep, and you are the good shepherd, God. So we look for a word from you right now, God, not from Pastor Harvest, God, not from anybody else, God, but from you, God. And God, once your word is released, God, your word is going to set us free. Your word is going to build us up, God. But your word is also going to tear down, God, right now, God. Mindsets, 
is going to tear down right now, God. Things that we've let it build up in our lives, God, that we couldn't tear down. So, Father, I give you the glory, I give you the honor, and I give you all of the praise, God, because it belongs to you. And it's in your mighty name I pray. Amen, amen. You may have good seats, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I just woke up everybody that. I know it's hot out here, amen, but just give us a little while, amen. We'll we gonna release this word in the atmosphere, amen, and and then we can enjoy ourselves, amen, amen. I'm I pray that somebody invited somebody this morning, amen, to come out and hear the word of God, amen. How many of us know that that's how we receive power through the word of God, amen. It's okay to read the word, amen, but it's something about when we fellowship, amen. It's something about when we get together, amen, when that iron sharpens iron, amen. See, you should be sitting next to some iron, amen. If you sit next to wood, then you're going to whittle it out, amen. But you need some iron sitting next to you, amen. But in this, in, this, in, in this Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses thirteen through fifteen, I want to preach from this subject right here: something old and something new. Come on with it. Tell your neighbor something old and something new. Something old and something new. In this Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, we know first of all that Paul was a, a tent maker by trade. In the second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, starting out, Paul is he, he's letting the people know uh, what happens when their bodies that they live in become like tents. Mm. Uh, that they have come to the end of their usefulness. Amen. Paul is letting the people know that these bodies we live in are like tents. And one day they're going to become useless. Paul said they will be taken down. But, but Paul gives the people a, a glorious account of, of what happens when they get to heaven. Amen. I, I love Paul because Paul will take you somewhere, but he won't leave you there. But he'll entertain you while you're there. Amen. Let you know that there is yet hope coming. Amen. So what Paul does, Paul gives them a, a glorious account uh, uh, to heaven. Paul says, and he assures them that when they take down a tent, that they're going to receive a house. Amen. See, that was a good place right there for you to clap right there. Because when your tent gets worn out, when your tent gets holes in it, when your tent can't be propped up anymore, when your tent has got to be taken down, amen, you got the assurance that because you're connected to the Father, that you're going to get a house, amen. Oh, my God, I thank you. I like that right there, amen. I ain't got to move my tent no more, amen. I got a permanent house, amen. Uh, Paul said, this house that you're going to receive is going to be a house not made with hands. Amen. But Paul lets the people know that, that when you are in these earthly bodies, uh, that, that you get weary. Paul says you get weary. You, you get tired. You get battered. and You get bruised. Amen. You get, you get hurt. You know, sometimes people hurt your feelings. Amen. Ouch. Sometimes people, they don't understand that you got feelings. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes when, when you're going through, people don't give you a consoling word, amen. Sometimes when you're going through, you don't get a pat on the back. But Paul says, these bodies, they get weary, amen. In other words, I believe what Paul is saying, sometimes these bodies get tired of trying to perform, amen. Help me, Holy Ghost, today, amen. Paul says, you're going to have some good days when you're going to not want to get out of the bed, amen. Paul says, you're going to have some bad days when you're going to want to get under the bed, amen. But then Paul goes on to say that we know that if we live in these bodies, that we are not at home with the Lord. Amen. Amen. This ain't even a mess, but I want to let somebody know right now that this is not your home. Amen. This is temporary. Amen. You got somewhere else to go. Amen. You just practicing right now. Amen. You tell your neighbor, say, don't, don't say this thing too long. Amen. Don't get comfortable. Amen. Because you got somewhere else to go. Amen. You got somewhere else to go. My God, my God, my God. My God, Paul does not cut corners. He don't try to make the people feel good, amen. Oh, Apostle Files, you know, sometimes we can't make people feel good, amen. Because we can make people feel good, they go straight to hell, amen. You got to preach the word of God. The Bible said be instant in and out of season, amen. You got to speak the word when you don't want to. You got to speak the word when people get on your nerves, amen. You got to preach the word when you don't even feel like getting up in the morning, amen. Sometimes pastors don't feel like getting up in the morning, just like you don't feel like getting up in the morning. 
out, but we got a moon, amen, with the high, because we got an assignment, amen. So Paul is trying to not make the people feel good, and he, he's not trying to make them feel bad, but what, he, what he's doing, he simply tells the people the truth, amen. Paul says, whether you are on this earth or whether you're in heaven, he said, your goal is to please God, amen. He said, because one day we will stand before Christ to be judged and receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil we have done while in these earthly bodies, amen. So Paul is letting the people know that one day when you leave this place, you will be judged, amen, for either, either the good you did or the bad you did, amen. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to do some good, amen. But, but then Paul, he, he, he transitions uh, from what uh, to expect a while on this earth to what to expect if you change while on this earth. Oh, let me say that one more time. Paul was teaching the people what to expect while they were on this earth, but also what to expect when they leave this earth and go on the other side. Oh, see, 2 Corinthians 5, 13 and 15. Let me read that one more time for you. So I, I, I want you to hear that. I want you to hear this. Paul says this. Paul says, Paul says, if, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we, if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Paul says, either way, Christ's love controls us. He says, since we believe, I, I got the believers today. Paul says, since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our own life. Paul says he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. See, this is, uh, before I get to my message, I, 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 gotta, I, I, want, I want to encourage somebody. I, I want to encourage the fivefold ministry. Amen. Uh, 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 see, this is the fivefold ministry uh, that, that Paul is, is, is kind of encouraging right now. Uh, see, uh, uh, the ones that have been called uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the ones that have been called for the work of the ministry, the ones that have been called for the edifying of the body of Christ, uh, uh, come on now, uh, to be coming to the unity of the faith, amen. What, what, what is this faith thing? What, what is this faith thing? For, for God we live and for God we die. That we can't do anything outside of God, amen. He's our head. He's our leader. He's our teacher. He's our king. He's our Lord. He's the Messiah. He's our Alpha. He's our Omega. He's our Keeper. He's the beginning and the end. Everything we need is because of who he is. Paul says we got to have the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, amen. I never know we ain't perfect. We ain't perfect. Every day we strive, amen. Some days we have good days. Some days we have bad days, amen. Some days we fall, amen. But it's for the warriors that get back up, amen. Sometimes your arm will get a little scratch on it. Sometimes you get a little dead in your arm, amen. Sometimes you get a crack or a crevice. But it's for the warriors that get back up, amen. Because why? You're going toward perfection. Oh. Paul lets us know that it is our responsibility to the Lord. To persuade others, amen. How many of us know that a lot of us, we, we didn't want to do this, amen. Come on, somebody. I, I, I ran for a long time. Like, God, pick somebody else, God. Oh, God, God, this, God they, they, they're not going to listen to me, God. Oh, God, they're they not going to want to hear me, God. They don't even listen to me in regular conversation, God. But when I start talking about how good you are, God, and how you deliver me, God, they're really not going to want to hear what I got to say, God. But God says, go. He said, go and do what I call you to do. But, but Paul, that's the one that have been put in positions uh, to carry his words. Uh, the one that sometimes people think they're crazy. Mm. Sometimes pastor and first lady are the only ones at, at Bible study. Those are the ones Paul's talking to right now. He, he got to encourage them. You ever know that every time before the disciples would go out, the Lord would encourage the disciples to let them know that basically you got this. And, and, and if they don't receive the word, you just shake the dust off and you keep on moving. And that's who Paul is talking to. He's talking to the ones that carry the word. Amen. Uh, the ministers that are the ones that's doing all the setting up and the taking down. Paul is talking to the ones that when the tithes and offerings are low and the, and the fivefold make up the difference and keep the water flowing and the lights on. That's who Paul is encouraging right now. 
Paul says, if we seem crazy. See, sometimes I feel like this and I say, God, I got to be crazy, God. God, sometimes I got to be crazy, God. To stand out here in the heat, God, and preach your word, God. God, to come into the kingdom, God, and preach your word, God, with people playing games on telephone, God. The people don't want to get their tithes and offering, amen. But expect to come into a sanctuary that's cool, amen. And the seat is nice and warm for them, amen. God, I got to be crazy sometime, amen. God. But Paul said, it, it will be seem crazy that you under attack when there's a perfectly cool building right behind you where the mortgage has been paid. Help me, Holy Ghost, amen. Uh, when we prepare a meal, not for recognition, but for introduction. The meal we prepare today is not for recognition of the church, but it's to get the people so we can introduce them to a risen Savior. See, uh, see sometimes you, you got to use different tactics. I mean, how many of us go? Something don't. Mm, Sugar may draw ants, amen. But you sometimes you need to have something different to draw roaches, amen. Oh, come on, somebody, amen. But the Paul says, if we seem crazy, if we seem crazy, it's all because we serve a, a risen Savior of this neighborhood, amen. The risen Savior that we say, serve is the Savior of Fountain Heights, amen. He's not the Savior just of true love. He's not just the Savior of true agape. He is the Savior of the whole world. Amen. I remember when we were kids, he said, he's got the whole world in his hand. Amen. He didn't single anybody out. The Bible said he died once, and he died for all. Amen. Oh. Paul said, if we seem like we're crazy, it's because we want to bring glory to God. Amen. Crazy folks stand out in the heat and preach the word of God. Amen. Crazy folks will stand on the corner and tell folks how good God is, amen. Crazy folks, amen, will go into a building that ain't got no hits for them, man, and get a, and get a scrub board and maybe a pop sugar stick and go up and down and bring praise to God, amen. That's what crazy people do. But it's not because they're crazy mentally, but it's because they're crazy spiritually, amen. Oh, we're going to get to the word in a minute, amen. See, what Paul was doing was, Paul was letting the people know. He was talking to the ministers, and then he started talking to people, letting people know that that, that grace, that, that grace that saved him will one day be put in us, and we will be in position to teach others how to walk worthy of his calling. Amen. Oh, my God. You ever thought about this? You wouldn't save just to be saved by yourself. How many of us know you, you're on a mission right now? Amen. You didn't get, God didn't save you. For you to sit and get spiritually fat, amen. He told the people, he told, he said, go out and compel the people, amen. Give them a word, amen. That will turn and encourage them to come into the house of God, amen. We look around right now, we got a few visits right now, but we gotta go out and compel the people to come, amen. You gotta let them know that this ain't the end right here. This ain't even the beginning right now, amen. You ain't even started, amen. God said got something good in store for you, amen. Your mission is not to walk up and down the street, amen. Your mission ain't to shoot at people. Your mission ain't to do drugs, amen. Your mission is to tell people about how good God is. Oh. Paul knew that that, that that grace, that same grace that saved him, would one day be put into action. Uh, that he would, he would, he would tell the people about the calling, about their everyday life. And how many of us know that grace saved us? I, 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 I think about it, Amen. I think about it, Elder. When I was out in the world, Amen. Oh boy, I did it good. I got it, but I was shy. But when it came to the things of the world, I excelled, amen. Oh, amen. When it came to the things of the world, amen, I wanted to fit in so good that I would do anything to fit in, amen. I got, I, I done testified before about this, amen. I got chased around Italy, amen, with AK 47s. Oh, my God, amen. I fell into the ocean, not a river, not a lake, but I fell into the ocean, amen, amen. My God, I wish I had somebody that could testify with me, amen. I did some things that I knew. That God did not want me to do. Spoke some stuff overseas in Thailand and found myself getting up on the banister at a hotel, getting ready to jump, amen. But then the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, You get back in that room and you close that door. I threw that jump down. I slammed them doors. 
I lay down in that bed and went to sleep, amen. Tell me what though God will keep you if you want to be kept, amen. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody today, amen. Paul knew that this grace was sufficient. Uh, whatever you need grace to do, uh, it'll supply whatever you need to supply in your life. See, Paul knew that he wasn't perfect, amen. Tell me what I like about Paul. Paul knew that he wasn't perfect. And Pastor Horace know he's not perfect. And I know that the people that I preach to, they're not perfect. But, but I know that, that, that if we follow Paul's teaching, God will start the perfection process on the inside of us. Uh, see, God didn't save you just to save you. God saved you because he wanted to deposit something on the inside of you. Something that would keep you and help somebody else. My God. God is so good, amen, that he can work on your inside and it'll affect your outside, amen. Oh, come on. I, I know you look good. You don't want to clap and you don't want to do nothing, amen. But think about where you used to be. Oh, my God. You can go right behind, amen. You can get on a church tent. But you sit on a tent, what we call a juke joint, amen, and you have a good time, amen, and there was no shame in your game, amen. But when you got the mind of Christ, amen, you told them, folks, I got to go, because there's something better for me, amen. I don't know about you, I know I'm not perfect. I, I, I know I'm not perfect. I, I, I know I'm not perfect. But, but, but I believe, I, I believe by faith that if, that if I keep on, Oh, that if I keep on, that, that if I don't give up, that if I keep on looking, if I keep on listening, if I keep on believing, if I keep on walking, amen, one day there's going to be a transition of something in my life, amen. I'm going to say this. I'm already saved. I'm already sanctified. I'm already full of his Holy Ghost, amen. But I know that there's still something else that he wants me to do, amen. How many of us know when you say anything you do is not by accident? When you on this side, when God does something on your inside, like I said, it starts to affect your outside. God started to send you places, amen. God started to tell you, you better open your mouth, amen. God tell you, you better tell them how good I've been to you, amen. You better tell them that if you don't live for me, you're going to die for the world, amen. See, you, oh, come on, somebody. See, we can't be afraid to tell the people, amen. You got to be bold. The Bible says, you got to be bold in your witnesses, amen. You got to tell the world, yeah, he saved me. Yeah, he took me off the drug. Yeah, he took me off the corner. Yeah, he took me off the alcohol. Yeah, he took me off all that stuff. And look at me now. Paul said, either, either way, whether you're crazy or out of your mind. He said, Christ loves us. I'm talking about something old and something new. The word old means ancient. It, it, it means not new. It means something that has been around a while. Something that's been around a long time. Uh, the word old means something familiar. Uh, how many of us been doing stuff old? How many of us been doing old stuff? Oh, see, wait, 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 wait. See, I, I, I found this out, uh, Apostle. Uh, old is comfortable. Come on. Uh, Come on. Uh, when you do the old thing, things that are familiar, that you're familiar with. When, when you do things that are, uh, when you do the thing that everybody else is doing, uh, they, they start to get comfortable to you. Uh, if I can use another word, uh, they start to get enjoyable to you. In, in, in other words, uh, old stuff starts to feel good to you. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me make it plain for you. Uh, you know how you go home sometimes after a hard day's work, you, you sit down in the chair and you, you get your old house shoes out. Uh, well, why why you get them out? Because they, they fit your feet so perfect. You had them a long time, amen. One side is laid down, amen, and the other side is sitting straight up, amen. They throwing you off battles, amen, and the toe is out of one of them, amen. You got the cushion on the inside hanging out, but you don't want to get rid of them. Why? Because they're comfortable. And it makes you feel good, amen. When you get home, you look for them, and you get mad when they're not in the place where you left them, amen. Oh, 
on your own is comfortable. But Paul says, but since Christ died for all, you got to die to that old life. Amen. You got to die to those things that make you feel good. You got to die to those things that make you feel comfortable. Amen. Uh, I'm going to say this. You got to die to those things that everybody else is doing. You got to quit running with the crowd. Amen. You got to quit trying to fit in. Amen. Because God has something better for you. Amen. Oh, my God. Pa Paul says that uh, Christ died for all. And we have died to our old life. Anybody died to their old life? Man, I'm talking about it's a thing that I see people doing. That stuff don't even move me no more. Amen. Oh, man. I I done graduated, oh my God, I done graduated from that a long time ago, amen. That stuff don't excite me no more. Old don't excite me, man. I'm looking for the newness of God, amen. I'm looking for God to show me something that I've never seen before. I'm going to do something that I never thought I could do before, amen. Anybody looking for the newness in their life, amen. But you got to get rid of the old, amen. You got to get rid of the old. You, you, you can't try to mix and dibble and dabble, amen. And man, try to think God going to bless. Paul said the old man that always shows up should be crucified with Christ. Oh, we don't like that there. We don't like that first lady saying. We, we don't like that. Paul said the old man that always shows up should be crucified. See, that's a big word right there. Should. In, in other words, when you came over to this side, you should have had a change in your life. Paul said that old man that always shows up. Oh, let, let me give you an example. Y'all love examples, amen. Oh, I tell you, they say one more thing to me. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. But you call yourself saved, baby. Oh, they got one more time to cross me. I'm going to lay down my religion. But you call yourself saved, amen. This is something you can't lay down, amen. How many know when you receive this? This is to death, amen. This is to death. Paul says, uh, that old man that always shows up should be crucified with Christ. You know, that, that old man that couldn't love? Because nobody loved you, you don't want to love nobody else? Oh, uh, come on now. Paul said that old man that had a bad attitude and held on to the past. Matter of fact, he's talking about the ones that you call yourself saved and you still held, holding on to the past. That man talking about, they just don't know. Oh, if I, if I go back to where I came from, I straighten them out right now. Paul said, you've been delivered from that, amen. Don't give him a piece of your mind. Give him Christ. Give him Christ. Give him Christ. Paul said that, that old man, that old man that had a, a bad attitude. When, when you come to church and you got a bad attitude, you need to check your salvation. Mm. That old man, he'll show up if you allow him to show up. Paul said that man should have been crucified. How many of us know that man was crucified when you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. That old man ain't got no more power. He has no say so. He ain't got any. He ain't got any uh, decisions in your life. Amen. How many of us know when you got saved by grace? You couldn't save yourself, man. Let's get that right there. You couldn't save yourself, amen. I, I, I tried for 15, 20 years. Say, Lord, I, I want to stop smoking these black and mild guys. They started getting good to me. And I was in church. And I was like, God, boy, I tell you, ain't that like when you get to eat a meal, you want a black and mild. Ain't that when you get to eat, you want just something a, a little toddy or something. You want something to calm your nerves down, amen. You want something to get you right, amen. But then finally one day I said, God, you know what, God? I can't do this by myself, God. I, I'm too weak, God. I, I quit for a week. I thought I had it made. But then that old man showed up again. I said, God, I thought you delivered me, God. God said, I didn't deliver you. You got yourself delivered. God said, I'm still working on you. Oh, but then two weeks came around. Then three weeks came around. Then three years. Then five years. Ten years. Fifteen years. Twenty years. Twenty-five years. I said, oh God, oh God, oh God, I've been delivered, God. You did it, God. I tried, God, and I failed, God. 
But when I gave myself to you, God, oh my God, y'all done catch that. It wasn't the black and mild that I gave to him. It's when I gave myself to him. When I said, God, it's not the black and mild, God. It's me, God. God, it's my willpower, God. I need you to strengthen my willpower, God. That, that, old, that old, that old man, that old man, that, that old man, you know that old man, he, he should have died with Christ. The Lord told me to tell you this. He said, you need to give the old man an eviction notice. See, some of us, we still shacking up with it. We still paying rent with it. Every time he show up, we got something for him, amen. But I, I, I dare you right this, tell the devil, the devil, devil I'll serve you an eviction notice. My father told me to tell you that the greater one is on the side of me. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Paul says, since we believe. Since we believe. I, I, I got a question this morning today. Oh, what, what do you believe? What, 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 what do you believe, man? Oh, See, uh, Pastor Jeff, I, I found this out. If you can tell what people believe by the way they walk. You can tell what people believe by the way they talk. Oh, I'm going a little bit deeper now. Don't get mad at me. You throw a rock at me, I'm going to throw it back at you. No, I'm going to throw it back at you. See, you can tell what people believe by the offering plate. Uh, you can tell what people believe by when you have an event, who shows up. You can tell what people believe. They may come and help you set up, but when they help you tear down. Or oh, once they get full, I didn't just going to leave and say, they got it, amen. Oh, what, what, what do you believe? Ask yourself this. What's my motivation? What, what, what's my motivation for doing what I'm doing? Amen. What's my motivation? What motivates me? To lay before the Lord and not in my bed. What motivates me? To spend time alone with him when I could be with my family. What, what motivates me? To spend time telling people about the goodness of God and all He's done for me when I could be somewhere relaxing and chilling. What's my motivation? Uh, my motivation is this. My motivation is Christ. My motivation is Christ because one day I I'm going to meet Him. The Bible says I'm going to meet Him face to face again. I got to do. If I wait till I get face to face with him, it, it may be too late. He may tell me to depart because I never knew you, but I, but I came to Bible study every once in a while. I, I put $20 in the offering plate every once in a while. I gave the pastor an amen every once in a while. I went and handed out tracks when I was on my off days sometimes. But I, I got to say this, God, my motivation, God, is that one day I'm going to see you. One day I'm going to behold you. One day I'm going to see you face to face. And what I want to hear you to say is this. Come on in, my brother. I want you to enter in. I see what you did while you was going through. I see what you did while somebody else was going through. I see what you did when you didn't have it to give. Yeah, but you know that I made a way for you, yeah. and you made a way for somebody else. Yeah. That was my motivation right there. That I could see him one day face to face. Yes, God. Yes, God. One day face yes. to face. Yes. Yes, God. What do you believe? Yes, God. What's your motivation on this side? I asked God a question a long time ago. I said, God, what motivates people? You know, you ever been in church and you see people and nothing motivates them? They don't clap. They don't shake. They don't stand up. Ain't got a hallelujah in their vocabulary. Ain't got a praise the Lord. Ain't got a thank you, Jesus. But every time you see them, they have an always say, can you pray for me? I need the Lord to release something for me. I need a new job. I need a house. Mom and dad is sick. My spouse is, is on the deathbed. Every time you look around, there's something they need from God. 
but they never come to guide themselves. Amen. Amen. Something should motivate you. Yes. Something should yes. excite you. I'm not talking about your flesh. Yes. Something should excite your spirit, man. Amen. Yes. When you hit the pavement, your spirit, man, should be leaping. Yes. Amen. Because they know it's going to get fed. Amen. Yes. When you hit the park, as a matter of fact, when you get up in the morning, man, before your feet hit the ground, amen, you should say to yourself, oh, I'm about to get some food this morning, man. I'm about to get a four-course meal. I'm about to get some dessert. I'm about to get an appetizer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have some leftovers, amen. Paul says, something should motivate you. Something should excite you to live right. Something should motivate you and excite you to talk right. Something should motivate you and excite you to talk to people right. Yeah. Don't go around talking about that, that just that's just my makeup. Yeah. I, I just told you that old man and died, amen. Right. You should right. let that makeup over there with him, amen. Yeah. Now you have a new style, you should have a new attitude, amen. Right. You should have a new walk, amen. Right. You should have a new talk, amen. Yeah. Your thinking should be different, amen. Yeah. That old man is dead, amen. Amen. Right. How many know that old man was crucified with Christ, amen? Yeah. With Christ. There should be something that makes you want to treat everybody right. Yeah. The Lord told me, tell you, stop living hurt. Stop living hurt. Lord, you know what they did to me, God. I can't forgive them, God. They, they know what they did to me, God. Pastor Larry used to always say, to me, say this. They didn't do to you what they did to me. When she spoke that shit that the Lord told her because they accused her of doing something one day that she knows she didn't do. Yes, God. But then the Lord spoke to her and said, Pastor, the Lord, he said, the people said they didn't do to you what they did to me. Yeah. How many of us know on this journey, I already told you, Paul said, you're going to have some bad days. Yes, God. You're going to have some good days. Yeah. Oh, let, let, let me bust your bubble for, before it gets started, man. I, I know you want to give God a yes. God, I, I go anywhere for you, God. God, I, I go in the hedges and the highways and I compel them to come, amen. amen. But when you compel them to come, when they don't open the door. Come on! Come on! Can you still compel them to come, amen, when they tell you to get away from the door? Oh, man. Can you still serve hot dogs and hamburgers when they say, I'll see you next Sunday and you ain't seen them in years, amen? Come on! What do you believe? What do you believe? My God. God told me to tell you, quit living hurt and expect a victory. Yes, God. We need to expect a victory in our life. Jesus. You know why? No. See, God promised Israel. Back in the book of Isaiah, he said, I'm going to give you a victory. He said, I am the Lord. He said, I'm the Holy One. Yes. I am Israel's creator. Yes. He said, I, I open the pathway. Yes. He's talking about the Red Sea. He said, I, I open the waters. It allowed you to walk over on dry land. But what I did was I enticed Pharaoh's chariots to come into him. But he said, but once they got on the inside, he said, I allowed the war to close in on them. But God said this, hey man, it was so powerful. I'm trying to get this. He said, but forget all of that. He said, it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. He said, boy, I'm about to do something Jesus. See, I, I told you about the old man, amen. But now I'm going to tell you about what God's going to do in you now. See, once that old man leaves, there's something new that's got to inhabit you in there. See, God's not going to leave you empty. Oh, my God. Because, see, if he leaves you empty, anything can habitate on this side of you. So, what he does is he says, I'm going to do something new. Tell something neighbor something new. He didn't say he was gonna give you new. He said he's gonna do something new in you. Oh, God said to use the old you once it's gone, amen. And he'll use the new you. And he'll do something new in you. But then he says this, this, this Pastor Cotton, I like this right here. He says, he says, uh, I have already begun to do something new in you. But then he says this, he said, Don't you see it, my God? He said, I have already begun to do something new in you. He said, don't you see it? In other words, what he was saying is this. He said, when I took that old man away from you, when it was crucified with me, he said, I didn't leave you empty. What I did was immediately I filled you. 
I'll put something inside of you that will bring out newness in you. That will go on a new walk, a new talk, that will new ideas. That was something, I never know we got something new in us. We got something new in us. He, 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 says, he says, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm going to do something that you never thought could happen in your life. He said, I'm going to make a walking path. I'm going to make a walking path through the wilderness. See, nowhere in the text does he say, he's going to give you a knife, you got to cut anything down. He said, what I've done is I've already made a way for you. All you got to do is just walk. He said, I made a path. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. He said, I made a pathway for you to walk on. You ain't got to do no work. You ain't got to do no labor. You ain't got to get nobody to walk with you. You ain't got to get nobody to co-sign with you. He said, I've already made the pathway through the wilderness. What is wilderness? What is, what is wilderness? Wilderness is something that you can't see through. Wilderness is something that you don't know what's on the other side. Wilderness is something that you contemplate what's on the other side. But what he says is, I'm going to make a pathway for you to walk through the wilderness. Amen. But then he says, he said, I will create rivers in dry wasteland. He said, I, I, I'll give you provisions. I'll give you provisions. See, a lot of us think that once we get over on this side right here, that we got it made. Yeah. I never know that sometimes this is a lonely place. Sometimes you get thirsty. Your pastors get thirsty. Pastors get hungry. Pastors need to be fed also. But here he gives us a guarantee. He said, I will create rivers in a dry wasteland. He said, I will create substance for you in a place that there were had no substance, but I will create it for you. In other words, what he's saying is, when you get on this journey with this dude, you ain't gotta look back and say, well, if I go back there, man, I know I love something back there that would take me into this new way. He said, but you ain't gotta turn around no more. Leave that old man over there. Walk into your new. He said, once you walk into your new, he said, I got you. I got provision for you. I got a pathway. He said, I'm going to be in wilderness and wasteland. What's wasteland? Nothing nobody else wants. He said, what I'm going to do is, he said, I'm going to allow you to build on something that nobody else wanted. He said, it's not going to be no junk either. He said, because when I build on it, he said, people going to come. Pastor Jeff, that's for you, Pastor Jeff. He said, a lot of times people I ain't going to that little church over there. We started over there. But look where we are now, amen. Don't despise small beginnings, amen. I never know our daddy on the cattle on a thousand hills, amen. He built that house right there, amen. He built that house right there. He can build a bigger house, amen. So don't let worry about nobody talking about I ain't going to that church. It's hot in there. Hell hot too, amen. But you don't want to go there, amen. Jesus. Uh, Jesus, let me, let me finish up. Je Je Jesus told me to tell you this. He said, the reason you never had a victory in your life is because you always did it like everybody else did. The reason you never had a victory in your life is because you always did it the way everybody else did. You know, when I was a child, I spoke, understood, and thought as a child. But when I became older, I became a man. I put away those childish things. In other words, a there should be a transition in your That's life. Right. You should desire to do the, the baby things anymore, amen. The Bible says you should desire the sincere milk of the word, amen. Yeah. The word is what's going to give you your strength, amen. Right. The word is what's going to give you your power, amen. Yeah. The word gave you your power, amen. Yes, the word gave you your power and your authority, amen. Yeah. My God. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I, I put away those childish things. The, the mindset I had when I came over on this side, amen, I had to get a different mindset, amen. Yeah. I had to let people know that you ain't got to worry about me no more. I'm not going to get even with you. Come on. You ain't got to worry about me no more chasing after you. You ain't got to worry about me backbiting you no more. You ain't got to worry about me slandering your name anymore, amen. 
I got a new attitude, amen. That old man uh, passed away, amen. I'm embracing this new, amen. I, 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 I keep thinking about this new. I, 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 if the old man was any good, God would have told you to keep it. What you said? If that old man had any cop in your life, amen, I'm, I'm quite sure the guy that we serve would have told you to get rid of him. But he knows you didn't have the power to get rid of So what he did was, he went to Calvary's cross for you and took the old man with him, amen. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. See, we were talking about the old way. The old way. Not talking about the old way no more. We're talking about the new me. We're talking about the new me. Tell you that this is the new me. The new me. See, the, the new me. The new me. The new me. Lord told me to tell you this too. He said, quit making excuses. Quit making excuses. David was young. He was out of place. He was out of position. But when he got a position, the anointing was put on him. And he did what he had to do, amen. Why? Because he got in place. Young man, don't make no excuses. God can't use me. I'm too young. Oh, come here. Who, who else? Abraham. God told Abraham, said, Abraham, I need you to get rid of everything that's familiar. All your friends. All your family. All your neighbors. And I want you to pack up. And I want you to leave. Leave all that old behind you. Because I'm going to take you somewhere new. Old, 75 year old with new. Come in, Noah. God told Noah, This is what I want you to do, Noah. I, I want you to do something so ridiculous. I want you to do something that people think is so unnecessary. I want you to do something that people would never believe would ever happen. He said, I want you to do something that when the time comes, that you and your family will rise above what I'm about to send to wipe out everything. Basically, what he told Noah, no, I'm gonna wipe out all this old. Yeah. And I'm gonna start some new. Yes, the Bible said it took Noah between 55 yeah. and 75 years yeah. to build this ark. Amen. Yeah. Can you imagine 75 years yeah. of people talking about you? Yeah. 75 years of people ridiculing yeah. you. Yeah. 75 years of telling people, what are you doing that for? Yeah. 75 years of people saying, he look like an idiot over there. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, the ground started to tremble. All of a sudden, the cows got thick. All of a sudden, the birds start flocking. All the animals start flocking to the ark, amen. They start coming in, amen. And all of a sudden, the doors were closed, amen. All of a sudden, then the water showed up, amen. The people start beating at the door, amen. How many of us know if you stay with the old man long enough, the door closed up in your face, amen. Oh, but no one says, it's too late. I've already shut the door, amen. Jesus. 75 years. Are people thinking you crazy, Pastor? Ah, ah, 75 years, 75 years. But Paul says, here's another transition. He wants to transition you to your new. So what he does in 2 Corinthians 5 17, what he does is he says this 2 Corinthians 5 17. He says this. Help me, hold on. Let me get past this. Let me get past this. He says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. I'm going to read that again because somebody didn't get that. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone, oh my God, anyone, he don't pick and choose. He said anyone who belongs to Christ has become, has his present tense, has become what? A new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Man, y'all should have been shot right there. He's an anyone. Oh, I'm an anyone. I'm an anyone. I ain't no nobody. I'm an anyone. Amen. He saw my hand. Out of everybody in the crowd, he saw me. Oh my God. He heard my plea. He heard my cry. He saw my pain. He saw my suffering, amen. He saw my hurt. He saw my broke heart, amen. He saw everything that I was going through. And he saw nobody stepped in to help me. But out of that crowd, he saw me. He reached down and he pulled me up. 
And he told me, he said, my son, he said, come to me. I have need of you. I have need of you. They've been using you, but I have need of you. So y'all didn't get that. They've been using you, but I have need of you. See, man will use you and throw you away. Man ain't got no more use for you. He'll throw you away, amen. And you'll find yourself standing on corners, amen. You'll find yourself talking to yourself, amen. You'll find yourself not knowing who you are. And you'll find yourself not knowing whose you are, amen. But Paul says, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. See, I'm a new person. My name ain't Skip. My name ain't Bobo. My name ain't Jack Jack. My name ain't Fifi, my name ain't all that, amen. You may know me by that, I may answer to it, amen. But I'm just trying to let you know that if you ever find out who I really am, amen. Oh my God. See, you tell you later, I'm not you who I used to be. See, my mistakes didn't take me out. See, I made a lot of mistakes, but they didn't take me out. Oh, but see, when I was making mistakes, I was being made over. See, I just didn't know that God was working on me when I made a mistake, amen. How many of us know when we make a mistake, amen? If, if you're rooted and grounded in Him, a lot of times you won't make that same mistake again. See, what you do is, the Bible says you resist the devil and he'll flee, amen. See, when you get that new wall, you start walking this way. The Bible says, oh, no, I know that trap right there. No, oh, oh. I, 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 I know what that cost me years ago. I remember, but see, if I, oh, if I answer that phone, I know what you're going to want. Oh, no, this is a new me right now. Oh, this is a new me, that old man dead, amen. When the old man, come on now. He said, you got to recognize the enemy. He said, but your mistakes didn't take you out. You were being made over, and you were being waiting. You were being in the waiting period to be revealed, not for people, but for God's glory. God is making you over. He has destroyed the new man. Not so you can get recognition, but so he can get the glory. So he, so he can get the glory. See, I, I found out this. I may be damaged. I may be missing pieces. I, I may not be desirable. I may be short. I may be fat. I may be tall. I may have teeth missing. I, I may be dirty. I may be smelly. I may not have a job. You might not like me. But I'm the missing piece that completes the puzzle that God has started on this earth. Amen. Y'all didn't get that right there. All the things you say you're not, but God tells you who you are. You're the missing piece. How many of us know this puzzle would not be complete if it was not for you? See, this is the new me. This is the new me, the one that everybody counted out. This is the new me that everybody counted out, but they never counted on me. This, 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 the, the new me. You know, the, the last hire, but the first fire. They didn't see value in me. I didn't even see value in myself. Let me hold on. Let me get past this thing. I was not the black sheep of the family, but I was the goat of the family. Not the greatest of all to all time, but I was the goat, the one that was always bumping his head against stuff. The one nobody wanted to be around, amen. Because I didn't follow the plan that God had laid out for me, amen. Uh, but when God came to see about me, he ignited the new in me. He ignited the new in me. You know what I, mean? I just see myself when I was a little boy. We stayed my grandmother up in the hills of Sarah up there by Cat Mountain. Hooper City, back up that way. Young man. I think I was like the first or second grade. And, and, and I found myself walking around this big old field. See, back then they didn't mess with children. I walked around this field and just praising God. Just remember having my hands up. Knowing that I did some things wrong. But I knew because I had been introduced to a Savior that loved me. I'm talking about at an early age. I, I found myself walking around in the field by myself. With my hands raised. Saying, God save me. God keep me, God. God help me, God. Because I knew that there was something different in me at an early age, amen. 
I wouldn't say, if God, wait till I get older. I'm going to serve you with everything I got. I knew at an early age that there was something different deep down on the inside of me. People treated me bad. They didn't want to be around me. I didn't feel love like everybody would feel love. I didn't get the toys that everybody else got. Amen. I didn't get the recognition everybody else got. I didn't get the accolades everybody else got. But I knew he loved me. Because every time they mistreated me, I found myself in the field. God, I thank you, God. God, I love you, God. God, they don't love me, God. But I know you love me. I know you love me. Uh, the Bible said the old man has died. The Bible said we once were dead. But now we're alive. We once were lost. But now we're found. God has done a transition in your life. Sometimes you got to tell people, you may not celebrate me, but I thank God for my new. Everybody's not going to celebrate you. But sometimes you got to pat your own self on the back. I know it's hard to get your hand back there, man. I had a problem all this week. I went and lifted the weight, man. Hand was so sore. Couldn't even drink water, man. Couldn't get, get, I had to lay my mouth down to the cup to get some water. But this lady be anointing me. She prayed for me. And I said, God, I may have to hold a microphone tomorrow. I may not have my headpiece tomorrow, God. So what, what I want you to do, God, is this. I want you to, God, create in me a new. So look at me now. I can raise my hand up. I can raise the mic up. See, you ain't celebrating me. But I celebrate me now because I can do this just on last night. Amen. God did a new in me just on last night. Amen. You got to tell your neighbor sometimes if you knew what I went through. Just trying to please you. If you knew what I went through, just trying to please you and this world. And it didn't take me out. You ought to celebrate with me. See, that's our problem right now. We can't celebrate nobody else. So get a new car, yeah, man. Yeah, take that patch on the back. That ask me to get a ride, yeah, man. Where you get it from? How much a car payment, yeah, man? Did they have another one, yeah, man? Who? Oh, my God. But see, people will celebrate your newness in Christ, yeah, man. Not like they used to. Not like they used to. See, you gotta tell people, I gave up my identity to fit in with my old habits. I knew who I was at an early age. But I gave in to who I really was. I gave up my identity to fit in with the world. To look like the other people. I lost my integrity. I gave all of that up just to fit in with people. But once God died on the cross, he said this, he said, he said, it's finished. He said, it's finished. You ain't got to fit in no more. If you're, if you're sitting right here today, if you're listening, if you're out here anywhere, you ain't got to fight to fit in. You ain't got to compromise to fit in. You ain't got to try so hard to fit in. See, you're a round peg trying to fit into a square hole. You need to get in where you fit in, amen. That ain't you no more, amen. That old man has died, amen. He said, it is finished. See, I have accepted who he was. And I've accepted what he did. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But Paul said, since he died for everyone, so that those who receive him will have a new life. He said they will no longer live for themselves. So Paul said once Christ died, he died because he knew that you were going to try to fit in. But since he died for you, he didn't die for himself. Amen. He died for you so that you can have the victory. Is it easy? No, it's not always easy. But he said, he, he said I died that you may have life and have it more abundantly. How many of us know we live in the new life now? New life. New life means that you will no longer live for anybody else. You will not live for these brokers out right here. You will not live for these rascals out right here. You will not live for them, live for them people out right here that's going to hell. But what you're going to do is, I like that word right there, but what you're going to do is this. You're going to tell them how you got, how 
how you got over, how you transitioned, how the old man died in your life, and how the new man showed up in there. Give me, give me about two more minutes, two more minutes. He said, you will no longer live for yourself. You will now live for Christ. See, I come today to tell the people, not just in South Heights, not just in Simcoe, no brother here, Bice Hill, Collinsville. I come to tell the people in Hoover, Jasper. I come to tell the people in Coleman. I come to tell the people in Fairfield. I come to tell the people in Forestdale, Woodlawn, Gardner, wherever you are. And that Jesus is still in the saving business. Amen. He can crucify that old man. Amen. He can give you new life. He can give you new life. You got to tell your neighbor, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. The old man dead, but I ain't going nowhere. Amen. I want you to embrace this new. Oh. Don't watch me. Don't keep watching me. Watch my next. Tell your man, watch my next. Keep quit watching me. You got your eyes on me. Watch my next. Watch what I'm going to do next, amen. Because see, I'm about to do something that you ain't never seen nobody do before, amen. Watch my next. Since I tell you, neighbor, my new is bigger than my old. You thought I did it big when I was at the club, amen. You thought I did it big when I was in the streets, amen. You thought I did it big when I was buying stuff, amen. You want to see me now. Now I'm on this side. My new is bigger than my old, amen. Uh, the word new means unused. A lot of us sitting out there right now, we got new inside of us. You got something on this side of you that you have not even tapped into. We have so many I can't do attitudes. We got so many I wish I could. We got so many I, I wish I could if only I could. We are worst enemies sometimes. But God said this. God said greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. So you got to tell your old man, old man, bye-bye. I'm embracing my new. I got new things waiting on me over on this side. Amen. I got things that I have not even tapped into. My God. My God. Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah. Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah. Sister Sarah. Ah, sorry, sorry, Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Can I give you a word? Can I give you a word? Can I give you a word? Uh, the word new means unused. God says he's, he's going to give you some unleashed power. I'm going to say that one more time. He said, I'm going to give you some unleashed power. Uh, see, y'all still didn't get it. He said, I'm going to give you some unleashed power. So basically what he's saying is, he said, there's something inside of you that I've been restraining, that I've been holding because they can't handle it. I'm going to give you unleashed power. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reins off of it. Oh, Jesus. He said, I'm going to take the reins off of it. He said, and when I let it loose, oh my God. People going to say, what that happened to first lady? What, what, what that happened to first lady? I, I ain't never seen that before. And all you can say is, God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. He said, I'm about to unleash it. I'm about to take the reins off of it. I'm about to take the chains off of it. He said, it's so powerful. He said, I'm going to restrain it. Because they can handle it. They can handle it at that time. Jeff, Pastor Jeff, these. Pastor Jeff, these. 
that needs somebody that's off the leash. Pastor Jeff needs somebody. And sometimes got to go beyond. See, I, I can identify with Pastor Jeff. We, we talk about it. We talk about it. I call him, he call me. But see, he, he, he needs somebody off the leash, off the chain. Because he got a humble spirit. That's why God thinks people lay to me. Because see, sometimes, yeah, you have a positive thing. Because see, sometimes what happens is when the old you is dead and gone, when that new man shows up, a, a, a lot of times, we still hold on to some of our old ways. But what, what, what God is doing right now is he's giving unused authority. Uh, how many of us know that authority is recognized but also authority has to be spoken? Pastor Jeff has been speaking with me and he, he speaks nothing but good things about true agape. That's the thing he's been believing for. And that's the things I've been standing with him in agreement. Go watch him. Watch his next. You got your eyes in the wrong place. Watch the next. God is using unused authority. His words. He said, because I'm releasing authority in the words, he said, I'm releasing what's been held up. He said, that the new me blesses you instead of blessing you out. Tell your name, behold the new me. Behold the new me. If you ain't new, don't, don't tell them to look at you. Because if you ain't new, they're going to see the old you. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, see, see the new me. The word behold means to look. It means to gaze at. It means to, 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 to really grasp the new. Found Heights would get the understanding and get the knowledge that there's hope on the hill. There's healing on the hill. Behold the new me. I know sometimes it's hard to let that old man go. But sometimes when you look in the mirror, you got to say yourself, that ain't who I used to be. The old man is gone. I see a change in my life. I, I, I see what God was trying to do. And I was part of the problem. He was trying to deliver me. And I was going deeper what he was trying to deliver me from. I'm here today to tell you it's okay to mess up. But don't stay messed up all your life. There's a Savior named Jesus that died on the cross over 2,000 years ago. That one day you have an out of the tent and go into a house. Oh, I'm not talking about the house in Portland. I'm not talking about a house in Gardendale. I'm talking about a house made in heaven. And not made with hands. Amen. And you have eternal residence there. You ain't got to pay no rent. You will never get evicted. The world will never get turned off. You will never have to worry about nobody knocking. Because there won't be no doors. 
about? Because we can trust everybody. See, the old man, the old man, I had to lock my doors. The old man, I had to lock my doors. Because he wanted my valuables. But see, in heaven, everybody got the same valuables. And his name Jesus. You ain't got no safe deposit boxes. You ain't got no vaults. You ain't got no money. Everybody got the same in heaven, amen. This, this, this is my, this is my, this is my, this is my message right here. Paul says, my desire and my prayer is that all of Israel be saved. Oh, Jesus. This is my prayer and this is my desire that all of Fountain Heights, Bice Hill, Collegeville, North Birmingham, Hoover City, Osimco, Bice Hill, Civic Center, Downtown, wherever you even read, wherever you are, that is my desire and my prayer is that all of you be saved. My God loves everybody. He said he gave his life for everyone. You know it's hard to believe that somebody loves you that much. That he will give his life for you. So today, my this is my, this is my prayer. The Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you don't know him as your personal Lord, he said, I'm not talking about the, the one grandmama walked around the kitchen talking to. I'm not talking about the one grandmama walked around moaning to. I'm talking about the one that you should know for yourself, amen. How many know you got to have your own ticket when you get to heaven, amen? Uh, if, if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, I just told you not even a portion of who he is. He loved you so much that he was willing to die for you. The Bible says, no wrong. You know, because you did wrong. He died for you. But it only took one time, amen. How many times have we tried to do right and we messed up and we didn't try it again? It's called a redo or a retry. How many of us know it worked on the first try for him? He didn't have to go back and do it all over again. It worked the first time. And I'm here today to tell you right now, it's still working. Come on, don't, don't leave here today wondering what your new look like. Leave that old man, leave, leave that old man sitting in that chair. And when you get through, you, you, when you get, when you get through confessing him as your Lord and Savior, you look back at that chair and tell him, old man, you stay right there because a new man got this now. I'm about to change. I'm about to change everything. Everything I messed up, I'm about to change it. But it's not going to be my will, but it's going to be by His will. Come on, you don't know Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Come on down here, let's let, let, get this thing right today. Come on, come on. Just like Noah, the doors of the ark are still open. It's, it's still time for you to get in, amen. One day something unimaginable is going to come, amen. And He's going to wipe away all that old. One day, one day. So don't sit there. Don't don't sit there like I did and wonder, look looking at me. What are they going to say about me? Are they going to laugh at me? They laughed at Jesus. They spit on Jesus. They put the hair in his beard. They hit him in the top of his head. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in his side. They nailed him in his feet. They nailed him in his hand. Amen. But he didn't say a word. He didn't care what they did to him. Why? Because he was about to get new. See, that's our problem. We worry about what people are going to say about it. I'm here today to tell you right now. They're going to laugh at you if you do. And they're going to laugh at you if you don't. But one thing about it. You get it right today. Come on. Tell anybody today. I promise you, I know true agape is not going to judge you. I know true love is not going to judge you. I'll be happy. The 
of all the angels rejoice in heaven. How many of us know we came outside the walls? I told them they didn't even want it. We're outside the walls looking for that one. We're looking for that one. Is that one today? So everybody say, but but you can't fool me now. You can't fool me. I, I don't I don't know. You may be a good actor or actress. I, I don't know. But Joshua said this. He said, you gotta choose today who you gonna serve. He said, ask for me in my house. We gonna serve the Lord, Amen. In other words, you can serve them gods where you just left. You can serve them gods where you are right now. But Joshua asked for me in my house. We gonna keep on moving and we gonna serve the God that brought us out. So we all saved, right? All right, well, what about this? Maybe you're saved. Later in the midnight hour, you cry. Maybe you cry. And you don't know why you cry. Maybe you cry. And you don't know why you cry. And you don't know why you cry. You wake up in the morning, tears are soaked into your pillow. And you don't know why. You call people on the phone and nobody answers. On Facebook, and everybody talked about everything, but you just called them and they didn't answer. How about you need a comforter? The Bible said, Jesus said this. He said, It's expedient that I go away because if I don't go away, He said, A comforter won't come. In other words, what's gonna happen is you're gonna always be crying and you don't know why. You're gonna always have trouble, you're gonna always have trial. You will always have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. Because I've overcome. The comforter is here. If you don't have the comforter, come on, let's receive it. The Bible calls it the free gift of the Holy Ghost. The line will never be empty. You'll never get a busy signal. The phone won't even ring. When you pick up your receiver, he pick up his receiver also. And he's always got a word. That'll heal you. That will deliver you and set you free. Does anybody need the comfort of this morning? I'm not talking about a pillow. I'm not talking about your good blanket like lying on, on, on uh, the penis. I'm talking about the one that'll lie right beside you while you're having a rough day. You're going through something right now, and you feel like it's gonna take you out. Your family don't understand you. You, you know that God is doing something in your life. You try to tell them you. You try to tell them about this new thing that He's doing in your life, and they, they just not gravitate to it. I stand with you. I stand in agreement with you. That they won't judge you. But they see, they, they'll see the loot is in you. And they'll gravitate toward it. Maybe you're sick today. You got an illness or sickness that you just don't understand. The doctor showed you x ray You took a CAT scan, MRI. And he told you that you just don't see a way out. I'm here today to tell you that you've got a way out. His name is Jesus. Thank you. 
Thank you for the newness in you, oh God. Thank you that you went to Calvary Cross. 